Sasha died in there, trapped. He probably struggled and screamed until he went mad trying to find a way out of that godforsaken place. Like me, only in his case, nobody got there in time. I imagine he thought that there was a quicker way to go, <sighs> the same way that Father chose. And maybe I would have done the same in his place. What I saw myself do in that mirror was just too much. Is this what lies ahead? Maybe I already know it, but I'm trying to hide it from myself. Maybe deep down, I know it's a hideous omen of what the future has in store for me. Maybe I know that, like everyone who's come across that cursed box, I too will take my own life. That I would rather surrender to death than face whatever it is that lingers behind that infernal melody. I should burn that thing. Make that melody vanish from the face of the earth. Every single person who attended that cursed concert in the Abbey, the entire the Grant Amersberg family and I, we all heard the song. I goes the Grant's diary, which I found in that place beyond reality, was my only hope of unveiling something, anything that could take me down a different path than the rest. And yet, the Grant's notes seemed like nothing more than erratic and incoherent ramblings of a broken mind. Sentimented, that no one could put them together in any order, much less understand them. But I found something towards the end that made some kind of sense. Although, I wish I hadn't. It's all over. Just a moment ago, I... Like every night, the song was invading my dreams, grating incessantly. I woke up soaked in sweat and veiled by the shadows natalie was sleeping but i was not this time it had to stop i was hell-bent on destroying the source of that awful song i went down to the basement and tore down the same wall i built myself with each blow i cursed the moment i decided to bring that melody into my home i couldn't take it any longer there she was, behind the wall. My wife, huddled in a corner, holding Elaine in her arms. I froze. If Natalie was there, what kind of diabolical creature was sleeping by my side? Monsters, all of them. My beloved Elaine, Natalie. The monsters had locked them away and wanted to take Ariadne. They wanted to take my baby. I grasped the mallet, determined to do whatever it took. I would not allow those fiends to take my daughter, not without a fight. They would rue the day they tried to harm my family. I would kill the monsters and the black figure and find my little girl. 
I followed them throughout the house. Every room was shrouded in darkness. There was something unnatural in the air. The melody had transformed into a choir of blood-curling howls. But I finally cornered them in the bedroom. Then I finished them off. I drew blood, and it flowed like a well from the grotesque black figures while they screamed and writhed the vile, deceitful fiends. And then, I went back to the basement, and there was nobody there. Natalie and Elaine had disappeared. No, that isn't true. They had not disappeared. They had never been down there. They were upstairs, in the bedroom, where I had left them. There were no monsters in the house. Except me. Only me. Only me. And the presence. Alright, um, we can send Etienne. Uh, my controller isn't wanting to work. Oh, it would help. Okay, we can send Etienne, we can send Lydia, oh is that it, or we can send Sophie, <coughs> Lydia, um, she's a psychologist, social therapist, she's got pretty good stats. Her speed's a little slow. I don't really want to send Etienne. And we always send Sophie. Let's try Lydia this time. Oh, and by the way, welcome back. <laughs> this is Melody Lynn. We are playing the final chapter in Song of Horror. Let's see, Daniel will only send one person to the Jeremy Hartwood Mental Hospital. Do you choose Lydia? Sure. Lydia, guess what? I need your help. I know, I know, I, I'm, I'm very sorry for calling this late, but listen. I found something. It's only a small feed, but it mentions everything that has the Jeremy Hartwood Hospital stamp on it. Yeah, that's the one. I, I, I know it's a bit far, but I, I think someone there, a Dr. Berenice Prestigard, read this diary years ago and looked into this madness way before we ever did. It says 1920. There must be something left of her research. If I'm not mistaken, the hospital was abandoned shortly after World War I. So, maybe everything is still there. Her notes, her files, something. No, no, I think... I think I'm running out of time. I feel bloody exhausted. I can no longer tell the difference between reality and my hallucinations. I need you to look for something, anything, and call me. I know it's a lot to ask, but I don't want to end up like the rest. And something tells me I should visit Ariadne one last time. 
Yeah, take your cell and call me if you find anything. As soon as I find out what Dr. Prestica was investigating, I'll drive over to the Grant Amersburg mansion. Yeah, good luck to you too. And thanks. Okay, off she goes. <coughs> Bernice Prestigard, a psychiatrist from the Jeremy Hartwood Mental Hospital, was the doctor who treated Ariadne Legrand Armsburg. So we need to find her notes. Characters with high speed can run quickly. That went away so fast. 7th of October, 1998. Let's see what we are heading into. Hospital, an old mental health institution for the rich turned dump, or something worse. Can imagine the sound of water in the fountain. Do you think we're going to be able to just walk right in? I should take a look at that old power generator. Okay. Looks like a power generator, and I'd say it still works. Well, of course. We've got the handle now. It's obviously we're dismantling the place. Are we going to have to turn that on before we can go inside? Okay, I don't hear anything, but you know what? I think I want to look around a little bit first because maybe we can find... Come on. Maybe we can find something that will help us turn that generator on. Looks like they tried to empty the hospital but had to stop at some point. Because I suspect we are going to need the generator for some light. But it might be that what we need is actually inside. So, but I just want to be thorough. <coughs> I won't be able to open that gate, but I don't need to go that way. All right, then I guess we go inside and maybe find a replacement handle for the generator inside. We do have our flashlight, so that is something. We'll listen again just to be safe. Listen to both doors. <laughs> I was going to say, oh no, we can't get in. Oh, look at this. The horror and the song. Daniel, you didn't overcome your alcohol addiction to let this kill you. I certainly won't let it happen. Not that way. Panel controls where the emergency power goes to, but it's not getting any electricity. And that's just a gurney. It's a big place. I've always liked marine art. Oh. A stapler on the other side of the glass on the desk. Oh. Empty drawers and worn down objects. Nothing to see. 
Looks like they never got around to moving. <coughs> the building is in better shape than you expect for a place that's been abandoned that long. It's still half in ruins, though. I'm sure the room next door is some kind of access control. Makes sense if this was an institution with potentially dangerous inpatients. Mattresses, bed frames. The keypad that opens the security room, it's not getting any power. Yeah, because we got to get the power going. Oh. The gate is locked, completely jammed. This is where we started. Okay. Well, there was nothing really... Uh-oh. I'm getting a heartbeat. In my controller. Oh, there's a place I can hide. Always good. I really hope this was part of an attempt at dismantling the place. Not finding much, huh? Except we do have a place we can hide. Maritime art. Oh dear. I don't know if we should try to grab that stapler or not, but it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot else we can do at the moment, does it? Can we go? Oh, maybe we can go in here. medical equipment and another door so we have a door here and a door here that I'm guessing I'm not going to be able to get into mm -mm. yep because that would be too easy the day room or something. Oh, that dog must be on the other side of that. None of the medical centers I've worked at had this variety on the menu. The dismantling has terminated. Work isn't done, but we're not going to stay here a single minute longer than we have to. Two of the teams have refused to return to the east wing, and Ezek and his boys tied a thick cable around one of the fridge doors to keep it sealed. They don't want to open it, even though some scores of tools and kitchen utensils are back there, along with a couple of high-quality chest freezers in perfect condition. It's not the first problem we've had, but the situation has gone too far, so we must leave. I don't blame them. 
This place makes my hair stand on end, and I've been inside for less time than any of them. There are still so many things of value in there. Typewriters, radios, luxury furniture. It doesn't matter. As soon as Emil's team returns, we're leaving. I hope they don't tarry, or nightfall is going to catch us here. I wonder what the hell is taking so long. I hope I don't have to go look for them. Okay. So they were having problems even dismantling everything. What do we have here? An old photo, photo torn to pieces in an attack of anger or despair. Maybe I could put it back together. Sure. Too, but I can't get it to line up properly. Finally! Oh my gosh! A black and white photograph torn to pieces and put back together. From highest to lowest, the seven numbers are in the photo. Okay. I guess that's going to mean something later on. Wow, we spent a lot of time doing that. I am not sure. It makes me nervous there's going to be some kind of monster. just because we spent so long doing that. They even have fancy furniture in the canteen. This place was classy. Uh-oh. Just brushing against that dirty old blanket would probably give me typhus. Is there a door or something somewhere? We must have a way to get back in there. Was this going to? No. Wonder if I should reach through and get that stapler. Maybe I need it for something. Because I am not finding anything else at the moment. Except we did get the puzzle together. Something was going to happen because we spent too long. And this was locked, wasn't it? Uh. Yeah, we can't get in there.
And there was nothing in there. I guess we're going to grab the stapler. Oh dear. Oh, cut myself. I don't have anything I can use, do I? A broken handle? <coughs> no. So I do want that. I just need a cloth or something. <coughs> that I can grab it with. Uh-oh, we have a heartbeat going. I don't want a heartbeat going. We can't do anything with that yet. Was there something out here we missed? rope looks a few decades old. I need to, okay, so I need to find a replacement rope. But I'm just not seeing anything. Nothing in there? No. Feel like I'm just wandering around. Looking and looking. And not finding much of anything. The gate looks unstable and must weigh a ton. Can I open the trunk? No. Can't do anything with that old car. Can I walk out? I'm not going anywhere. Well then, I am not sure where to find the replacement rope for our generator. Obviously, they were dismantling the place. So all we've managed to do is get a picture put together. Nothing that way. Nothing that way. Nothing straight down the middle. Nothing that I can see over here. I never got around to moving. I bet you it's in that dining room somewhere. Because I am sure not seeing anything here. There's our hiding spot. Oh. Hope this was part of dismantling the place. Just a bed. And nothing more. 
grab that sheet, wrap it around my hand so I can grab the a painting about astrology in a mental institution. How very scientific. I'm sure the room next door is some kind of access control. Makes sense if this was an institution with potentially dangerous inpatients. Mattress bed frames. There's got to be something I am missing seeing. We can't open that because we can't turn on that. And I'm pretty sure we need to do the keypad. Shit. Yeah. We can't go upstairs. It's all blocked off. So we're just hitting a big fat zero. That door is locked. Not that way. This is medical equipment. This is a bunch of dangerous stuff I can't move. I'm just doing a more thorough sweep. Oh no, not this one. Ah. She did 
did it. Whew. I don't know. But that was just too much. All right. There has got to be something in here we can use. And that must be on the other side. I thought I saw a dot on that, but I must not have. Can we go back here? Just not seeing a whole lot. I can't get through there. Oh, maybe I can. Okay. All right. That was my own silliness. was probably expensive. Luckily they don't serve alcohol to mental patients. Useless rusty instruments. I guess we go through the door. After we listen, of course. Small stuff. Hopefully what we need will be in here. Is that a cupboard we can hide in? Yep. find what we need in here. Oh. Someone used this cable to make sure this handle wouldn't move. Well, I don't have the knife. I don't know if I should take it or not. Let's look around a bit more. Because it very well could be that the cable will make something fall on me. What's left of old tinned goods? Should I take this drawing and save for my save my collectible for later? I don't know. Why is it giving me all these stupid choices? Okay, I'm going to take the drawing. Cross my fingers. Ariadne's lost drawings. Collectible item. Alright. And then I'll probably, because there's nothing else in here, I will probably go take the um, <coughs> cable also. because I don't see anything else I could do. Right, you can't go through the door. You just have to take the cable. 
Oh, wish us luck. Phew. All right, now we've got the cable that we need to, uh oh. Uh oh. Oh. Phew. Oh no, run, Ariadne. Or not Ariadne. You're not Ariadne. But yeah. We don't want to know. We really don't want to know. We just want to go use our cable and get some power going here. Phew. I thought I'd made a mistake. I thought it was going to grab me. Okay, come on out here. Let's get this going. Okay, I'm guessing I'm going to have to combine these two. Yes. All right. And then we will use that on the generator. There we go. Now we'll be able to see a thing or two. Just getting the frozen thingy. Oh, we're getting the little wispy things. Just stay calm. It's okay. Oh, see, now we can see better. Okay. So I think we need to play. Whoops. I'm starting to doubt my own sanity. <laughs> Keypad opens the security room. It's not getting any power. Oh, so we need to go look at that little generator thingy, don't we? This thingy here. Now that the generator is on, let's see what I can do here. The morgue, the lift, security. Let's do security first. Yeah, we can only do one at a time. Okay, let's do security. Because I'm thinking that's what this is with the keypad. Oh. Yeah, it unlocks the door to the security room. All right, we need numbers. From highest to lowest, the seven numbers are in the photo. Okay, so what is that? How many are men? 
two, four, six, seven. So seven men. One in a black jacket. Six in white jackets. Wait, seven men, four standing. I've got scribbles everywhere. Seven men, four standing. One with a black jacket. Six with white jackets. Three are sitting. One with a mustache. Three are sitting. And are those glasses in his pocket? Okay, so three with glasses. And it could possibly be three with a mustache too. Reset this thing. Seven, four, one, six, three, three, three. No. So if I go in order, seven, six, four, three, 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 one. That was it, finally. Oh my gosh. Uh-oh. I see some notes there. Let's have a look. Ah, Dr. Baroness Prestigard. It's a good start. Today's session with Ariadne was by far the most productive to date. Not because of the conversation we had, for her mind continues to adhere to the usual extravagant patterns, but because today she asked to get her things back, which led me to a surprising discovery. Down in the storage room, I was convinced I would not find any of the belongings taken from her when she was admitted, but there was nothing further from the truth. There was a diary and a music box. After handing the box to Ariadne, I quickly browsed through the diary, which apparently belonged to her father, and that's where it gets interesting. After years of researching paranormal phenomena, Argus Legrand's investigation led him to the Abbey of St. Cecilia, where a cursed concert had supposedly taken place. After spending a considerable amount of money, he got his hands on the only remaining sheet music from the concert, and convinced an acclaimed musician to play the music one more time. The new cursed concert would take place on a steamer that would sail down the Rhine a few weeks later, and both Legrand and his assistants would be there to contemplate the true effects of the song. After the concert, the tycoon wrote the following in his diary. Those ignorant, illiterate fools. I can only laugh at their curse and their stupidity. The only misfortune that damn son has brought is a hole in my bank account. Alas, at least I take the melody with me. I will have it recorded and play it each day for my family. Ha! Those drunk, lazy bastards. Their misfortune was caused by their own stupidity and bad blood. Wanting to put the blame on a song is yet another sample of their total lack of culture. Argus Legrand never knew that the steamer suffered a strange accident, just hours after he got off, that killed everyone on board. And yet his thoughts on the melody eventually changed. They did indeed change. Wow. I can't believe it. Daniel wasn't exaggerating. This is much worse than I ever imagined. Wow, wow, wow. She looks like Berenice Prestigard found something big, really big. I need to find more research and information. All kinds of user manuals.
Uh oh. I have a heartbeat. I don't like heartbeats. Oh, is that the door I came in from? Was there? Well, this wasn't the area with the stapler, was it? So maybe it was over here I had the heartbeat. Oh, look at this. What's this down here? Oh, we can't go in there? Completely stuck. That's where the padded cells are. It's horrendous. Okay. This is looking pretty spooky. Not hearing anything. Oh, look at this. The projector still works. Unbelievable. I need a movie reel to put in it. Looks like an audio-visual documentation archive from the period there might be something useful in there if I can open it. What do I have? An inhaler and that's it. <clears throat> Is it going to ask me if I want to uncover these guys? Green is enormous. Now I just need to find a movie to play on the projector. Which I'm sure is going to entail lots of danger. Because that's what we do. Uh oh, we have a heartbeat going. This cannot be good. <coughs> we'll see how involved this is. It may end up being in the next video. It looks like they never got to finish what they started. Sounds pretty quiet. Nope. Well, that one let us in. That surprised me. Oh, where's my flashlight? There we go. Oh, what's this? This hole connects the two rooms. It looks like someone covered it on the other side. Piano. Wow, the piano is in pretty good shape, more or less. Is that somewhere I can hide? I don't like the thought of going back in a wardrobe. But hey, if it's going to protect you, that's what you want to do. Violin. Music can really help with mental illness. I'm glad this patient had the chance to pursue their hobby. I'm guessing this patient was planning on rehearsing all of these songs. Wonder if they played the music box song. Well, I guess we'll take a look at the room next door. Sounds pretty safe. Oh, a light. Place is a huge mess. There we go. Hmm, I think someone used this sketch to cover some kind of imperfection in the wall. Oh. 
Yeah, we're gonna move it because we saw... Yeah, see, that's where the boards are. Looks like two of the hospitals... Shared a secret. And we've got a heartbeat going on. Whoops, seems like the patient never got around to finishing that patient painting. Charcoal sketches, some aren't even finished. They look professional though. Looks like a painter's utensils. Is this somewhere I can hide? Wood is swollen from humidity. There's no way I could open that cupboard now. So I can only hide in the other room. <coughs> this patient kept a Bible on their nightstand. I wonder if it was the patient who boarded it up, boarded up these windows and why exactly. Okay, you know what we're going to do? Let's turn off this light. I'd rather have the light on as long as possible. I can see the room next door. Seem like these patients. Oh, I thought maybe... Maybe a secret would be revealed. Maybe if we go back to the other room. By pulling off the boards, we revealed something. What is on the chair? <coughs> I don't think I'll be able to open those drawers. Okay. Oh, looky here. I can't get up to look at it closer though. Oh, there we go. Okay. It doesn't like the light, but it likes the song. So choose the ones that are in the dark. I guess so. So it would be those two shapes there. It looks like a shield and a squirrely. triangle and a can't really tell what that is and a box with a dot oh I think it's this one right And a shield again. And then that kind of a swirly. Shield. Same kind of a swirly again. Triangle. And is that the H shape?
something. Wow, that's hard to make out. Is that what it is? And then like a V or a Y. Oh, that was it. Okay, now we have a black piano key. It has a key in it. All right, we have a key. What are we going to use the key Why for? Just play? These notes. I felt something oh no, what's that, the song? kinds of animals. I see the patients here took their hobbies to the extreme. Okay, that's enough of looking at that. If those animals were alive, this room would be like Noah's Ark. A bunch of old chip trophies decorate the shelf. something to read. She blinks, awoken by hunger. Tis night time and she listens. She takes flights with lethal silent. You scream as she tears you away from yourself. Satisfied, she lands on her nest and hoots to the wind, announcing her victory. Her firm grip paralyzes you and blood spills as she feasts. She swells and beats her wings and satiated, she sleeps. Is that an owl or like an eagle thing or something or like a bird of prey of some kind? <coughs> Classic novels. Looks like this patient had other health issues. Okay. Oh, is that this thingy right there? But there's nothing I can do with it. But that sure did seem to describe like an owl or something, didn't it? Or some kind of bird of prey. But nothing, apparently, that I can do in here. hearing anything behind the door. Okay, it's uh, uh, can't open that doorknob. What is this? Uh, oh, that was spooky. Uh, A small cabinet with emergency supplies. The lock looks broken. I need some kind of tool to pick it with. And all I have is this key. Shit. Oh, I don't have to listen? Not that way. Oh, because I can't even move it. Mm -mm. Nope. Oh, I'm not going to have to go through that door. That scary door. No, that does not sound good. I 
don't hear anything. I still don't hear anything. Not that way. Nope. Okay, so we can't go that way. So we need to find a tool to open our thing. We've got a key to something. Was it to one of these doors? Was this one locked with a key? Yeah. It's locked on the other side. All right. What are we going to use our small key on? One of the rooms downstairs? Is this room open? Well, that's where the movie thing was, huh? And that's not somewhere we can go. And now those are padded cells. But there were some locked doors down here. I think it's the door that leads into that room that was locked. This door here. Shit. Nope, it's locked from the other side. Okay. Is there anything locked in here? I don't remember. This door? doesn't like the light. Yeah, no. And I can't take that knife. And that's just a place where I can hide. This was just a plain old stove, right? What did that say? I don't know what was in there, but it looks like I'll never be able to find out. <clears throat> Not sure what this key goes to. Nothing there. Nothing there. Was there another locked room upstairs? Uh oh. What is that? Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna freeze. I can't hear well enough.
<laughs> Temperature <laughs> dropping. God, okay. Wow. Can't get to that door. That's locked on the other side. I am not sure what this key is to. I need proper protection. So some gloves. Something. Okay, so we either need to go back upstairs or there was something in this office. One or the other. Could there have been something in here? This little cupboard? Aha! That was it. All right. Oh. Okay, shall we use those over here? still works. We'll soon find out. I wonder if we're going to step into another screen. Oh, look at this. 1920, interview with Ariadne. Oh, oh, I have to move. Okay. Hi, Ariadne. How are you? Do you feel like talking today? Mum. You know, I think you're right, but I don't see things like you do. If you don't feel like talking, you can draw whatever comes to you first. Okay, so we need to find a paper and pencil or crayon. That's a dream catcher. Seeing anything, do I have to go out the door? Oh, oh. the light. Who doesn't like the light? The light? Who doesn't like the light, Ariadne? <coughs> Can I go out here? Excuse me. We 
need to turn off the light. This is not a good idea. This is why you turned into an old hag. No. No, you don't hear them. You don't see it or understand it. What don't I see? Tell me how to understand you, Ariadne. Sleep, like me, in my bed. You want me to sleep with you? It, it, it's normal not to want to sleep alone. Sometimes I get scared at night. Not here. At home. Daddy, Mommy, and I like to sleep there. And they understand. Mommy? You mean you want me to sleep at your house? Yes. Sleep there and listen to the song. Don't do it. And then you'll talk to me. <coughs> Is it your daddy? No. It's Mr. Neuer. Oh, interesting. Mr. Neuer? What did she say? Mr. Neuer? Daniel? How is that even possible? That recording is almost 80 years old. Wow. So we can go up here now? And there is a experiment re or procedure report. Patient Ariadne Legrand Armsburg, therapist Dr. Berenice Prestigard. Description. The volunteers are divided into two groups, the experimental group and the control group. The 12 test subjects will be placed in individual padded cells. The six subjects from the control group, North, will live there for the duration of the experiment, but will not experience any other change in their usual routine. The six subjects in the experiment group, South, including Ariadne, will be played two cycles of the song from the music box daily, approximately four minutes. This procedure will continue for 21 consecutive days. Notes, the patient is expected to verify that the melody has no effect on people and that this fact is presumed to help in the treatment of her mental condition, which does not seem to improve at all nor respond to other treatments. Regardless of the results and given the young age of the patient, electroshock is not recommended under any circumstances. So they experimented with the music box. Ooh. I see spots of ink on some of the labels, but nothing readable. <clears throat> oh, look at this. Okay. This is an area I think we are going to explore in the next video. So we will be back. Actually, let's come out here and wait. And we'll go in there. Because this seems like a little bit safer place here. And we will explore that. Except that I have... Oh, wispies. When the wispies are gone. We will pause this and come back again in the next video. I hope you're enjoying it. It's very intense. I'm very much enjoying it. Okay, it seems to have passed. Okay, we'll let her heart settle down and I will see you again in the next video. Bye-bye for now.